What's going on everyone? The new Seeds of Change DLC for Anno 1800, the first DLC for Season 4, is upon us. So we're going to take a deep dive into the new Hacienda mechanics that comes with this DLC. Everything you need to know about it, how it works, and what you could do to make it work best for you. So with that going, let's get started. Let's take a look at the Hacienda when you first unlock it in the Obrero stage. It has a very cheap construction cost. It's only 13,000 to build, 60 timber, and 50 bricks. It also comes with 100 attractiveness, so you can boost up the attractiveness of your island just a little bit to get yourself started with some of the policies that it has. Depending on where you first build your hacienda and how much population on the island, will determine the radius for the building itself. It has an initial radius of 15 tiles before 200 population. A 200 population is actual population on the island. It is not affected by any free workforce you're getting from influence milestones or from workforce boosting items. The 15 tiles is counted from the very center of the building out. So you are losing a few tiles because of the Hacienda itself, but that's going to be just fine. Because every 200 population, you get an additional five tiles up to 1000 population gives you 40 total tiles for building space. So when you're placing your Hacienda, make sure you're placing it somewhere that's going to get the biggest benefit later on. Don't place it too close to the coast. Don't place it too close to too many rivers. Although I know that's a bit of a challenge in the new world, but try to find a nice open space for it if you are planning on getting the maximum range for the Hacienda. Within the radius of the Hacienda is where you build your modules. There are several different modules, paving, and pathways, these act as roads. The Hacienda Ornolero Quarters, the Hacienda Obrero Quarters, the Storeroom, a Hacienda Farm, a Brewery, and the Fertilizer Works. Now the farm and the brewery act sort of like multi-factories from Season 3 where they have different recipes that you can choose. However, they are considered production buildings in terms of categorization, and this is important for items, which we will talk about later on in the video. The paving and pathway tiles are a little unique where you can build and drag them outside the radius, but they do have to be connected to the Hacienda itself. So if you want to drag a paving tile all the way out here, you can. However, it still has to be connected to the Hacienda itself. Just be aware that there is a limit on the number of these tiles you can place. There is 250 available, and it does share the counter between both the paving and the pathway. The other unique thing about the Hacienda is that it does act as sort of a local department similar to the local departments for the palace. You can select a single policy that does affect the entire island. So you're going to want to most likely specialize your Haciendas into different types of buildings and different types of focuses for those islands. There are five different policies. You start with the first two unlocked by default. The first one is Dietary Education Initiative. This decreases the need for fried plantains and tortillas by 30% for all New World residences. This includes both the standard 3x3s and the special 4x4 quarters. Specialized Lumberjack Training affects lumberjack huts and sawmills, increasing productivity by 20% while decreasing maintenance costs by 20%. Standard Weights and Measures unlocks at 450 attractiveness and gives you plus 75 storage to all depots. Now this is just standard depots, not the Hacienda storerooms. Local Assemblies gives plus 5 influence to Hacienda of Rare Recorders and is unlocked at 1000 attractiveness. And Unloading Permits unlocks at 1,750 attractiveness and gives you 50% loading speed. So, just be aware of these policies. Choose the one that makes the most sense for what you are wanting your Hacienda to do. The two different residential quarters you can build for the Hacienda, the Ornoleros and the Obreros, are a 4x4 residential that hold double the number of population from their standard 3x3 counterparts. 
This does mean that they do consume more of the standard goods, such as fried plantains, ponchos, tortillas, coffee, and so on. They do consume double the amount of their standard 3x3 counterpart, so just be aware of that as you are building these that you will have to compensate and have slightly more production to support them. They also come with a couple of new needs that their 3x3 counterparts do not have. Ornoleros need schnapps and hot sauce. Obreros need hot sauce and a tolly. There are no new happiness needs for them. Nothing has changed for the luxury goods. Next up on the modules is the Hacienda storeroom. This is just a very self-explanatory building. This is a land-based depot that increases storage capacity by plus 50. This is not affected by any policy that increases storage, though, so just be aware of that. Next up are the Hacienda Farms. The Hacienda Farms are a very, very efficient and awesome method of producing many of the goods in the new world in much less space with much higher productivity. You can produce sugarcane, corn, coffee, caoutchouc, cocoa, potatoes, spices, and grain. So you cannot produce tobacco, cotton, pearls, obviously, or plantains. So you still do need some fertilities on other islands. And of course, you're still going to want fertilities for things like these listed, except for the potato spices of grain in the New World, of course, because those don't exist, uh, because there is limited space around the Hacienda, and you may need more than what you can produce in that range of it. The speed of production for all of these is the same as it would be for the standard farms themselves. Sugarcane is 30 seconds, potatoes is 30 seconds, spices is two minutes, grain is one minute, and so on. So the speed is the same as they normally would be. The benefit comes from the number of tiles. No matter what type of farm it is, it only needs 64 tiles standard to produce at 100%. Farms can be affected by tractor barns from the Bright Harvest DLC. They have the exact same effect, increasing the number of tiles needed by 50%, so they will need 92 fields, and decreasing the workforce by 50%, so only needing 5 ornoleros, but increasing the productivity by 200%. They can also have a fertilizer silo attached to them, and we will talk about the fertilizer silo a little bit more in just a few minutes. Next up, we have the Hacienda Brewery. Now, this is like a multi-factory from Season 3 in that it can produce multiple types of recipes. It can produce rum, beer, atoli, schnapps, or hot sauce. Now, the rum recipe is standard. It takes wood and sugarcane, and it produces rum in 30 seconds. So this is just like your standard rum distillery. So if you want to build these here or build the regular ones, it's up to you. Beer is a little bit different from the old world. It can produce from grain and corn. No more hops, no more malt houses, just grain and corn. It does take one minute to produce the beer. So you only need one grain and one corn to support one brewery. Now, these are slightly less efficient than their old world counterparts because they cannot be electrified. So even though it has a simpler input, it is a little bit slower. So decide how you want to use that from there. The Atoli recipe takes one minute to produce and just needs sugarcane and corn. Schnapps is a little bit different from its old world counterpart in that it produces in one minute instead of 30 seconds. So again, it is less efficient, but it only needs a half a potato farm, basically. So one potato farm can support two distilleries here in the new world. The hot sauce recipe, the spices take two minutes to produce. The hot sauce factory itself can produce in one minute. So one spice farm can support two hot sauce factories. The big things here are the beer and the schnapps being able to be being able. The big things here are the schnapps and beer being able to be produced in the new world. They are slightly less efficient, 
than their old world counterparts, but being able to produce especially the beer with such a simpler input does make it a lot more valuable. A lot less space taken up and you don't need to transport it back and forth. You also really won't need a lot of schnapps unless you have a lot of Ornolero and Obrero quarters. So if you don't have many, you're not going to need much schnapps at all. So it may not be a big deal that it produces so slow. Build your haciendas the way you want and see what you're going to need. Last but not least, we do have the Hacienda Fertilizer Works. Now, a quick note on this. I am recording this during the early access period. At the moment, there is what we believe a bug with the timers on the fertilizer works. This has not been confirmed or denied by the developers yet. So we are unsure of the exact mechanic of this. However, I will talk about it in the nature of how it is presented currently, and then also talk about what I think might be wrong with it. So currently, the way the Hacienda fertilizer works, works, is that any animal farms placed within the radius of the fertilizer works now produces dung one every third cycle. Now, this does, of course, mean that you make need to make sure that your island storage is not at capacity, because if it's not producing, then it's not going to be producing any dung. So any of your alpaca wool or your beef needs to be sold off or kept low in the storage just so you're not capping that out so you can continue to produce dung. The rate of dung produced is equivalent to however much your production on your animal farms is. The faster you make animal, the faster you produce in the animal farm itself, the faster the dung will be produced. The fertilizer works takes the dung and currently it takes five minutes to produce one ton of fertilizer. So it'll take five minutes currently to produce one ton. The fertilizer is taken to a warehouse and then from there it is taken to a fertilizer silo that is attached to an a agricultural farm. The fertilizer silo currently also takes five minutes for processing. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio between your fertilizer works and your fertilizer silos. This is where we are not sure if this is accurate or not, because that would mean you would need a lot of fertilizer works in order to supply silos for all of your farms. We're not sure if this is correct, and we believe that the fertilizer works itself should be producing much faster. But at the moment, we don't have any clarification on that, so I'm just going to explain it to you as it is. If they do change this later on, I will make a quick video notating that and make comments down below and pin those so you know if there are any changes to these mechanics. So basically, right now, however many silos you have or want, you'll probably need that many fertilizer works unless they make alterations to the balance numbers on these right here. So at the moment, with the way it currently works, you're going to want to make sure you have enough fertilizer works to supply the number of silos that you want to have on your farms. Fertilizer silos can be attached to any agricultural farm in any region. They are not exclusive to the Hacienda. You can put them in the Old World, you can put them in Mbessa, you can put them in Cape Trelawney if you want to. Any region that has agricultural farms can have the fertilizer silos. All you have to do is transport those goods to those regions on a trade ship. The fertilizer silos further increase the productivity of the farms by 100%. As well as the extra goods that we already mentioned. So with tractors and fertilizer silos, you can get your farms to a base of 400% plus two goods every third cycle. That makes the combination of Bright Harvest and Seeds of Change really, really powerful for your farms and your productivity baseline before items are added. The last thing to know about the Hacienda itself is that it does act as a warehouse for all of this production that we have been talking about. The breweries, the farms, the fertilizer works, and anything else that is within range of it. This does act as a warehouse. Now, unfortunately, we cannot see the actual warehouse UI right here. It is uh, not available to us. However, we do know that the Hacienda has four loading ramps. 
So it does have the four loading ramps, which is not much. So if you have a lot of production around it, you're going to need more warehouses set off into different parts of your uh, production chains in order to facilitate more loading ramps because this will back up on you. So just be sure to keep an eye on your Hacienda. If you start seeing too many carts backed up right there, then go ahead and place down some more warehouses and upgrade those to increase the number of loading ramps that you have available for your production buildings. How you go about setting up your Haciendas is going to be completely up to you and your playstyle. There is no one right or wrong way to do an Hacienda. What you see right here in front of you is a mixed use one. I have a mixture of homes, production, and different things mixed into it right there that I am using for this island and other islands. If you don't want to do it this way and you want to have a pure agricultural Hacienda with nothing but farms, you can certainly do that as well. The Hacienda is probably going to be a little more useful come the Empire of the Skies DLC when we know that we're getting some sort of a commuter pier via airships. And you might be able to make an Hacienda full of residentials, nothing but Ornoleros or Obreros, and transport the population to other islands via a commuter airship. You can have an Hacienda full of nothing but farms and have an Ornolero workforce in a normal, regular marketplace setup nearby to staff all of the farms and just have a pure agricultural one. You can have one that is nothing but breweries and just making lots of beer, lots of schnapps and all the goods that your other people might be needing on other farms and other haciendas. There are many, many possibilities of ways you can go about setting this up. Like I said, I don't believe there is one right or wrong way to go about setting up an hacienda. It's whatever works best for you and how you might want to specialize that island. The different edicts and stuff really lend itself towards that. So be sure to check those edicts out and see what's going to work best for how you want to go about setting everything up. The last thing I want to talk about real quick are items. Now, there are no new items that have come with Seeds of Change. No new items. However, many, many items have been reworked to function with many of the new buildings we have. If you're interested in finding out some of these items to see how they work, check out the Items tab of the Statistics screen. Be sure to tick that Unknown box over there. And you can select all islands, it doesn't matter. And then start typing in what you're wanting to look for. Now, for the farms specifically, you do need to be very specific about the farm. If we take a look at just Hacienda Farms, you'll see that only three items show up for Hacienda Farm. We do all Hacienda Farms, some more show up, but it's still not many. What you have to do is look up the specific farm that you're looking for. Then you'll see a lot more. Things like Alexander Hancock, who affected all old world crop farms, now also affects Hacienda potato farms. Ali Al Zahir affects all new world crop farms. Miraculous Steel Plow. Yvonne the Yo Woman now also affects Hacienda potato farms, and so on. It's like this for all the different ones. The Spice Farm in particular is kind of interesting because items from the Land of Lions DLC will also affect this. So you could put Calla Lily of the Desert Bloom to decrease the modules by 10%. Now she will not add indigo fertility to the island. Don't try it. Won't work. Trust me. Tried. <laughs> but it will decrease the number of modules by 10%. Same thing for right here. This Spice Master will in, uh, increase the productivity by 20% for the uh, for the Hacienda Spice Farms. So new and Besson items will work on the Spice Farm. So it's kind of interesting. They did retool many, many items. The fertility work as well has several items that affect it, such as the Sophisticated Slurry Lagoon and decreases the negative attractiveness that it gets. This one right here is going to be very, very useful for the Thielman's Tube increases productivity by 50%. So you want to try to get items into trade unions and town halls as the Herrero and Ornolero Hacienda Quarters are affected by standard residential items as well. 
we did a little bit of testing and you can get about four trade unions or town halls around the radius of a hacienda with some room to spare. So if you're wanting to maximize your productivity of your hacienda farms or maximize the workforce or residential bonuses from those hacienda orders, be sure to use trade unions and town halls and check out some of the items that you can put into them. That is it for me, guys. That is an overview of the Hacienda mechanics for the Seeds of Change DLC. I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight into how it all works. If it did, be sure to let me know down below. Join my Discord server if you want to hang out with me, other members of the community, get questions answered about the game, talk about Anno, and share your screenshots and thoughts. Subscribe for more content, and I will see you guys in the new world. Until then, take care.